Good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to our regular scheduled work session for August 16th, 2021 at 6 p.m. Good evening, Mr. Bridge, administrators, council, citizens, cameraman. Welcome, everyone. Uh, uh, Mr. Bridge will be the acting clerk for this meeting. We appreciate that. And when you're ready, you can call roll. Awesome. We'll start off. Alright, roll we'll call. We'll just go down the line here. Councilman Cobb? Here. Councilman Roadwall? Here. Vice Mayor Cook? Here. Mayor Lowry? Here. Councilman Grimm? I'm here. Councilwoman Eagleston? Here. Councilwoman Nowakowski? Here. We have seven members present. Thank you very much, sir. And moving on to the invocation tonight will be done by Councilman Cobb. <laughs> guidance to do what's right for our citizens, watch over our military and our first responders, our fire and EMS and our deputies. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 We've done regular session, communications done, city manager's report will be handled in regular session, comments from members of the public. All right, moving on. Committee reports, none, resolutions, and ordinances will be done in regular session. Down to other business, legislation discussion. Mr. Bridge, good evening, sir. Thank you, good evening, uh, members of council and members of the public. Uh, just a quick overview of the legislation. Uh, some of these will be uh, introduced only, and then some will actually be action tonight as well. Um, so we'll just start with the resolutions. Uh, the first one is resolution 21-15R. That is uh, introduced tonight, but we'll have a public hearing and action on that on 9-7-2021. And that is the CIP for 20, years 2022 through 2026. And we'll get a little taste of that here, here in a little bit when we just kind of do a rundown with council on that. Uh, so as far as the ordinances goes, up for voting tonight is uh, ordinance 21-28. That is an ordinance determining to with improvements of certain public streets within the corporate limits of the city of New Carlisle, Ohio, by lighting them. Uh, the second one up for action tonight is Ordinance 2021-29. Uh, that is an ordinance levying assessments for the improvements of certain public streets within the corporate limits of the city of New Carlisle, Ohio, by lighting them. The third uh, ordinance we have uh, action on tonight is Ordinance 2021-30. That is an ordinance certifying to, to the Clark County Auditor and authorizing placement on the tax duplicate super, certain delinquent utility accounts for collection with real estate taxes. That was a tongue twister. Um, we have another ordinance uh, introduced on 8-2 that is up for tonight. That is ordinance 2021-31. That is an ordinance certifying to the Clark County Auditor and authorizing placement on the tax duplicate certain uncollected nuisance abatement fees for collection with real estate taxes. Uh, we also have ordinance 2021-33 that is introduced tonight. And then uh, action on 9721, that is an ordinance authorizing the expenditure of funds of over $20,000 and authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract for the purchase of a wood chipper. We have ordinance 2021-34 that is introduced tonight, public hearing and action on 9-7-2021. That is an ordinance supplementing certain appropriations contained in the new Carlisle City Ordinance uh, 2021-01. Those are supplements for our mayor's court and a few other items. <coughs> uh, did I read out the one with the grass newtons? <coughs> no. collection, I think I did skip that one. You skipped uh, 2021-32. Yep, thank you. Uh, so ordinance 2021-31. Uh, is introduced on 8-2 of 2021. We do have public in hearing and action on that tonight. That is a, an ordinance certifying to the Clark County Auditor and authorizing placement on the tax duplicate certain uncollected weed and or grass cutting fees for collection with real estate taxes. And the last ordinance is indicated as eight with the asterisk by it, meaning that it is introduced, but I just wanna run some information with this on council because I will be asking that legislation to die with lack of motion. 
Um, that particular legis legislation piece came to us Friday at 3.30. Uh, Jake nor I really had time to really dig into it, so we wanted to go ahead and put it on for council. Well, over the weekend and this morning, Jake and I both read into it a little bit more, and council is more than welcome to vote on it. I just wanted to give you some insight on it. Um, so the state of Ohio sued some people for the opioid crisis that we have in Ohio. Uh, part of that settlement is, you know, we have to pass legislation if we want to be on it. If we, um, if 95% of the state entities who are involved in that settlement agree to the terms, then we'll get 100% of the cash out coming to New Carlisle, and that is 20, around $24,000. If 95% of people, uh, uh, jurisdiction in Ohio do not support it, then we'll get a 70% payout, which is around $17,000. Here's where I think council should let that go, is um, once we read the more summary today, it is, um, depending on what dollar amount you get, but it's earmarked for opioid reduction in your town. And it's also payable over 18 years. So if we get the 17,000 to be just over, you know, do the math on it. Uh, but then we have to track it and we have to use it for opioid reduction. Since we don't do that in counts, I don't have the appropriate staff to really manage the money. So that's something council will have to take into consideration. Um, if it was 17,000 free money, do what you want with it, sign us up for that any day. But the earmark of it is very concerning because we don't have the staff in house to really deal with opioid crises because we really contract out with Park County for all of that. Mm -hmm. Yep, and that is all for legislation. I'd be happy to entertain any questions. Council. Regarding that, is there some way that we can designate the recipient as Clark County? So that Clark County would get more. Um, I didn't. Jake didn't indicate that. We had a lengthy discussion on it. It doesn't seem like any kind of that we could sub grant that or sub receipt it like we could with Harris Fund. Mm -hmm. It seems like we don't hear that much about overdoses. Is that true, Chief? They've, they've gone down. They roller coaster. This, you know, this month we may have none, next month we may have 10. Uh, as Deputy can tell you, we, we tend to, it tends to flow. Uh, whatever, say Dayton had two weeks ago, will flow into the Huber Heights. What they had last week, we'll get this, this next week. Our last high batch, we had a batch of uh, um, cocaine and fentanyl mix. We had, we had three overdoses on. Anyone else? I don't think anybody else has anything, sir. Okay, awesome. Um, all right. Uh, any other uh, business city related council? <coughs> all right. Well, now we'll leave that up to council to make a motion to move forward. If you so would like. We should do that, shouldn't we? I was switching between screens. Yeah, no, I know. I was, I was switching between screens. I thought, you know, yes. So, Mr. Bridge. Awesome. So, uh, that time of year again. So, we need to get our capital improvement plan 2022-26 uh, reviewed with council. Uh, we are introducing that tonight. It won't be voted on until uh, 9 Seven, which is a Tuesday, by the way, so everyone knows that. Our next meeting is on a Tuesday, not a Monday. So it's going to look a little different. Um, so Ms. Harris actually, during our admin meeting, presented this fantastic Excel sheet, and I ran with it. So again, Ms. Harris, I told you 100 million times, I'm going to do it one more time, fantastic breakdown of what we need. I, we feel as though this is a lot more streamlined. You can see multiple departments at once versus, you know, how we did it fund by fund last year with graphs and all that stuff. I don't think we need graphs for this particular thing. I might look at doing that for the actual operating budget, but for our purposes here right now, I think this serves um, a lot better than having all the fancy, fancy stuff. It is very easy to follow. Um, what we did this year is really cleaned up. We had a lot of things in our CIP that we could actually move to maintenance and repair. So anything that you saw in years prior that had to do with repairing a building or repairing a pool or anything that we already had established and we're just doing maintenance to it, we actually took that out of our CRP as, our fix, or as, our, as we are able to. 
So you're going to see some of these funds that didn't have as much as years prior, it's simply because we're just taking that $12,000 we had out for full maintenance, upping the actual uh, operating budget, full maintenance by the $12,000, because it doesn't need to be capitalized according to our fixed asset plan. So we have a very streamlined and, and, and not very heavy capital improvement plan for you guys to review. So how we've done it years past, just, well, I'll just start with the departments that I'm responsible for, and then we'll go down the line and we can talk about each of our other departments. Uh, Mr. Hutchinson is not feeling well. He's at the city building. He's going to try to come for a 7 o'clock, so I'll take his section as well. Um, all the sections I'll be talking about aren't too too heavy. You'll get a little bit more, especially with Mr. Kiko's departments and then with Mrs. Harris' department. So um, city council, uh, technology updates. We don't have anything for you guys until 2025, and that is simply to replace your iPad. Um, if there's anything down the pipe prior to that you guys want, if you want me to look at getting new iPads prior to that, let me know. We can start the process. But right now we have you about five years out. I spoke with Jason uh, Hanrahan, who's our IT guy, simply, and he did recommend about a five-year replacement cycle for uh, council iPads, just simply because they're not used on the same uh, the way that we use them as far as we use them a lot uh, for day-to-day -day operations. And I'm just assumption here that you guys use yours just for council meetings and um, the internet and then the uh, uh, outlet, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. You get to using it more, it may wear and tear a lot quicker, but in the meantime, if you notice anything wrong with your iPads, let us know. We can get your replacement for the group as a whole to get new ones, uh, 2025. Again, if you want to move it up or back, just let us know. Um, I have your updates, big updates at the same uh, schedule as mine for my big technology updates. My iPad, my iPad will hold off a little longer than yours. I may need a desktop down the road or something additional. That's why I put it so far down in 2025 because I'm not sure yet. But I do have small increments in there from a year, like 3,000, 3,500, just in case I do need to get something on the smaller side. Our capital threshold for purchases mm -hmm. is $2,500. So basically, if anything's over 2,500 to meet certain criteria, we do have to put it on. Um, any questions over R2 funds? Any questions or concerns? Mm -hmm. No? Anything you'd like to see added or taken away? Okay, so we'll go down and start with the finance department. Ms. Harris, do you want to do Okay, thank you. <laughs> so with Ms. Harris's department, again, we took a lot of things that we could uh, just put in repair and maintenance and put them in the actual operating budget. So we do have quite a few small uh, 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 purchases uh, projected for finance in, in years past. So our biggest one is our software support, and that's for our uh, software system that we use inside the city building. Now you'll see small increments on there, uh, just because you know every year we just assume they're going to raise their prices a little bit. We we want to be a little over. We don't want to be under, so we can come back and have to mend anything if, if we're over in the you know final year <coughs> of ninety three thousand. So that is something we have on there every year. It is for our software support, the network server and protection. We did beef that up a little bit. I had a meeting today with Jason Hanrahan. Um, I'm going to be signing uh, bringing legislation to council here very soon. Um, and basically contracting out with the bridge group to do everything that we do for IT, just as a one yearly lump sum, a setting to build all these increments every month. It makes it a lot more easier for us to budget. And we actually need to beef up our network security quite a bit. Um, this year, I can see in the city manager report, we had a cybersecurity application that goes along with our liability insurance. It's 17 pages long. And the insurance carriers are now getting home with government municipalities because we're the ones getting hacked all the time. Um, so it asks questions about patches, how much you update back work over my head. Jason's going to fill that application out for us, um, but we need to start beefing up our network security. Of course, it's going to cost money to do that. If we were to get hacked, and what they're telling us now is it's only a matter, it's not a matter of if, it's really a matter of when. So not trying to scare anyone, but that's just the day and age we live in. So we did up that years past. I also do have a long term. Moving on down, computer replacement. Um, it was in the CIP last year to get new computers, so we did, and we got them this year for those that are waiting to be installed. Um, so we do have them on a five-year replacement cycle too. These are desktop, and they are used every day, five days a week, very heavy. Um, so we did put that down 2026. We'll analyze the performance of these computers 2024, 2025, but maybe we'll push back. But as of right now, we do want to keep that five-year replacement cycle. SSI utility upgrade. Uh, this is a basically a, a pickup back from where we upgraded a few years ago. Uh, we, when we did the office upgrade, 
due to the financial constraints of the city at that point in time, we left the utility income tax and Angela and central cashier out of the upgrade. Um, so we wanted to bring those remaining departments on so we can have a fluid um, um, software system uh, across all users in the city building. So we, now we have someone in VIP, which is our newest, and three of them on the old version, which is the e -Dub. They still communicate, correct me if I'm wrong, manually, so we have to manually go and enter By doing that upgrade, it's going to streamline processes, and we don't have to do all the manual. Uh, so that's what that charge is for. I guess it's just a one-time charge for the year. Um, but we also need to take into account the software support. If we're adding more to it, we can assume the software support is going to go up just a little bit. So for um, finance, for year 2022, we have 93 scheduled in capital purchases. Um, that's probably about the average you do year in and year out. I, I didn't look at year mm -hmm. past. Yeah, that's other than the upgrade. So, but we, again, we took some other things out that we normally would have in any questions or concerns with finance? No. Okay. So I'm just going down to planning. Um, citywide enhancements. We, I just, we, we put some money in there every year, and that's to get flower pots. You know, if we want to get a bench for downtown, a picnic table somewhere in town, we can do that through the planning department. Um, right now, we are actually working with Fab Metals to get some brackets made for our uh, uh, street lights downtown, so we can put some hanging baskets up. So that is on the agenda for this year, but we're at the liberty of that little schedule to get that done. Um, but little enhancements throughout the year can go a long way. Um, so it, I think it's very reasonable to put it in there. Um, drone and related items, that's uh, for 2022. Um, we got $5,000 in there for that. I think it'd be awesome for the planning department to have a drone if the fire department needs to use it. That's great too. Um, we do need to send uh, uh, Derek in to, to get his pilot license for that. So that $5,000 charge includes the drone, the license, and the everything for that. Um, so I think it'd be great arsenal to have in our kit, you know. Um, so, yeah. So that is all we have for planning. Any questions on any of those particular issues? No? All right. So, parts. How are you? Can you take this one? Okay. So. <laughs> He's working for it all. He's trying. I want to get past this page, but you have to do the rest. <laughs> All right, so park, shelter house upgrades, we got 10,000. Um, I think we have some things on the deck for this year still to do um, with the parking lot and stuff like that. I know this would be a discussion topic. I kind of left it at 10. If council wants to discuss, to add more or more, welcome to. All these funds right here come out of the general fund, so they're not fund specific as far as streets go to streets. It's got a little bit healthier on there. Um, so shelter house upgrades, we have those in there. Um, I did leave it blank for 22, 23, 24, 25. I don't know, we know what's gonna happen with the new shelter and how much we're gonna need to put in here. So we got some time to think about that, truly we do. Um, if you guys wanna talk about up in that 10, that's great. Um, I, don't, I, don't know if we, I don't know what else we need to do um, as far as we, if we get the outside done. We are working with the issue nice new mics. Uh, so if we don't have enough money in 2021 to get that, we can get them out of that 10,000 for this too. But we are working on the mics. Playground equipment, that's to get new playground equipment. Um, so we, I didn't do anything for 2022, uh, but I, am, I would like to pick that up in 2023 with 35,000, and namely because I don't know where the Creating Healthy Community Grants is, and that's a lot of the grant money that we got last uh, for all this previous equipment. I haven't heard from the county about that, so it's always best to get bang for your buck when you can partner with an agency that gets the grant money, because that playground equipment is not cheap at all. Uh, and again, we just have it on a recycle. We have 2024, it goes down to 8,500, uh, 12,000 in 2025, and then 2026 and um, for uh, new equipment and, um, yep. Yeah. And of course, that is not the takeaway from the Parks and Rec Board. We'll definitely partner with them. Uh, this is just the fun money for this balance that we can work with and they can take you back on to. Uh, and we would always consult with them about anything we're gonna do with uh, new park equipment. <coughs> Uh, park upgrades, uh, those are general upgrades. Um, we don't have anything for 2022. So I think we're probably good on like our fall protection, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but then we have the basic 3,500 for the year on out. Um, how are we doing this for 2022? We have maintenance facilities. Oh yeah, all okay, correct. All right, uh, utility carts, that is 20,000. I do believe, is that a shared expense with um, Streets. Nice. This, be, this is, what is that? this is replaced like the gator. Okay. Like you guys borrow, yeah, we spray, go drive around with, yeah. Mm -hmm. The other one just died on. 
Yep, and that's a 2022 purchase. And then we have bike path equipment that's 8,000 for each year. Uh, it goes up to 8,500 in 2024. Um, that's just basic bike path stuff that we would need throughout the year. And then bucket truck shared expense with street department is 30,000. We really want to get that in 2022. But as we can see, that disappeared in years past. Yeah, we did have it in 21, and we've been searching all year for a bucket truck that we had budgeted for the amount we had, and we couldn't find anything. New tree services are heating everything up. So, what are you looking at price wise? Well, we put in 80,000, and we're hoping that that kind of gets us into something when someone starts to sell out. But um, it's, it's crazy out there for that type of equipment. Yeah. Oh, Mr. Cobb. We had talked about doing a driveway out here. Mm -hmm. Is that going to be included in there? That's what we're, we've got funds for this year to do that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I think, I don't I can't remember the dollar amount, but yeah, we're going to be, we're going to be talking about here soon. Okay. Also, I will get done this year? Mm -hmm. I'll start our best. Cool. Yeah. Yep. Trying to get contractors. <laughs> All right. Lands and buildings. Um, city garage and pools, uh, 3,000 uh, for 2022. Basically, just some raw numbers in there to get them any tools that they would need that would go over our capital threshold purchase. Um, Thirty-five thousand in 2023 for a new garage, a city garage truck, and then city garage upgrades. I know we've been trying to get this done for, for quite some time. Um, Forty thousand in 2022, uh, twenty-three, uh, twenty thousand in 2023. We don't have anything for 24 and 25, and then we have twenty-five thousand for 2026. So for lands and buildings in 2022, your total capital expenses is looking to be around 43,000. I got questions on that. Side. I do. Uh, under lands and buildings, that would include the street department HUD over here, would it not? No. Oh, because it would be under its own street. Mm -hmm. Okay, never mind. I'll come back to that one. <laughs> and then we have, uh, new, the new one is Mayor's Court. I'm not, I don't know what to expect. With that, I don't think anyone does. So right. they have some minimal 5,000 a year, and they say we're going to need it. They have some up pressures that I have to get here soon. I think when I get back to the station, I'll get that last half the lawn section and stuff like that. So um, this is just for miscellaneous things that they would potentially need unforeseen things throughout the year. Um, I think after we see the first couple of years go, we'll have a better understanding of what they're going to need from year in and year out. I think the first year is going to be trial and error. But, you know, we'll have some guidance from you know, the two reps experience people we have coming in but until we have a year or two of our, of our own experience we got it unanticipated any questions on mayor's tour okay the street hut building the street building yeah the one down oh the city garage the city garage okay and that included in there yeah 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 you're going to cut the one section of the garage out the leaks and then put a, a uh, Someone like a lean to up. Yeah, I, I couldn't think of work, but that's figured in there on this. Okay. Is council so good for that? The lean to stuff like that? Cool. It, it's whatever we're trying. We've had like three or four contractors through to look, and they're just they're swamped with stuff. So we're trying to figure the right materials. Now, when you put the lean to, where you plan to put them in there? Well, there's concrete already down. down. No, I mean storage wise, where you going to put them in there? Just various equipment that we got, the uh, Dura Patcher, um, leaf machine, just all those trailer. Uh, Do we want to move that fence out? The water plant fence? Yeah. So if we could just demo that and not just lean to, hear me out. Dr. Davis has that big area right behind the building that already has a fence. God bless that representation. Mm -hmm. What if we make an offer on that? That's later for discussion. Oh, yeah, you yeah. Go, go, go behind the garage. There's another thing I've seen about, too. If we can get that front end, could we put something? Oh, yeah. You know, something like that. But he already has a concrete area. It's decent size. So he's got a price to do it. around the top, too, then? Uh, well, no, there's not. We're looking at cover and storage. What I was concerned about. You put a piece around that cover and storage? You've got the link to it. The fence coming down? It's linked to the wall. Oh, I got it. And that's what you're saying. If he's going to put equipment that under, mm -hmm. if, if it's not secured some way, it's going to get vandalized out there. Yeah, well, that's what he's clarified. We'll he's, doing them, yeah, he's, he's, he's doing walls around. Yeah, yeah it's just a lean to yeah, I got covered. Yeah. It's not just the, the ceiling. Yeah. 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 Oh, that makes me more comfortable. 
But we'll still talk maybe at the later date about that, Dr. David, Dr. David. Yes. All right, Alan, you turn off here. It's your time. Uh, under streets, uh, we have street painting equipment, which we have $9,000 for um, this year. And that is to replace the curb machine that, you know, we paint all the curbs. And some of the lines we have, it's a little push uh, thing. It took us almost a, a day here last week to get repaired again. Um, we've replaced the guts in it, so we think we're due for a new one. I believe this is from the early 90s, this machine, so we're going to get that replaced. And then snow plow, um, we had moved to 23 because every vehicle we have has a good snow plow. Plus, we have, I believe in the current CIP, a snow plow that um, fits in the 21 budget. So we're looking to get one that can mount on a couple different trucks. And then under the next line item, we have bucket trucks, and that is shared with parks. So in parks, we have, I believe it was 30000 Yep. And then uh, in streets, we have fifty. So right now, we have $80,000 we're trying to find a, you know, a used bucket truck. That's uh, probably more of a 65-foot lift rather than the 40, or 65-foot reach rather than the 43-foot reach we have now. No. And the next one is emergency capital. Let me get a couple questions real quick. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, okay. So on on streets, one I I can't remember. If, I thought I heard you mention it before. The are our snow plow, not the plow itself. I mean the trucks. Okay. Like I thought I heard you say something about the 550 while back. The 550 is going to be coming up soon on a on repair. We just had a new pump put on it. Okay. Um, engine wise, I think we're doing well. Transmission wise, we're doing well. Um, but we'll be planning. I think sometime you know soon but we just got it repaired it's got a, it's got a good plow on it <laughs> and uh, you know we try to use the medium duty truck now a little more than what we did with that one okay um what about i think this question come up actually i think you were going i, I don't know if it was mr cook by the what about the street sweeper would it be beneficial for us to look at getting one i know we got the old one back there that's been there since the beginning of time but i mean um um, what kind of money are you looking at a used street sweep or a small one that would I mean, Well, we looked at the small ones, the ones like a professional property maintenance has, right. and they're for parking lots. Okay. Uh, almost solely parking lots. When you get into the size that, I um, can't remember the name of the company or the company that we used the last couple of times, um, they get in a regenerative air, hardly any dust, obviously you're well over 100000 okay. Um They are a maintenance nightmare. I used to work on that one when I first got here, yeah. and it's constantly in the shop. Right. It's like a combine to a farmer. It just You're working on it nonstop. Yeah. So most contracts we've been getting are five, six grand per. And I think it, Randy had mentioned to me that, you know, looking at maybe an, an extra sweep per year to go to two, yeah. for sure. Mm -hmm. Two sweeps, 10,000, you got 10 years almost of sweeps for the same price as that unit. Right. Good Without, point. And you're, even by that time, you're probably already replacing it again. Yeah. Yeah, no, I see them. At the, they have them at the shop all the time at the base, too. They're always working on them. And we, we used to um, work with Clark County to, to get a little bit of side sweeping back in the day. They quit contracting sweeping totally okay, just because of the wear and tear. And even City of Springfield, they contract out the sweeping yeah. except for a really? little bit of stuff. Yep. No kidding. No. Do we have another street sweep coming this year or are we done? Please? I don't know if we did one yet. No, we're trying to get one scheduled with the gentleman down in Cincinnati, and it's just a struggle trying to get in a schedule. Okay. And then my last one was on the uh, the street department building. Can can we put, can council, or what do you think, because I mean, you deal with it, about putting some money into that building, whether it's looking at getting the getting it painted, covered, some fencing, you know, because when you come to town from 571, I and mean, we all know that building's old, that, that silver paint looks really rough. Could we maybe get um, a high uh, you know, privacy fence to wrap it just to, you know, maybe clean it? I don't know. What do you think? I mean, it just, it looks rough back there. Is there anything that you have to Well, I know because we had to start moving all of our, well, a lot of equipment will be going away here soon. We're getting ready to put that on good deals. Um, that is going to be our spoil pile location for a while now. Madison will be gone and will be all grassy. So right now we're trying to figure out a way to um, move, move some things maybe down to wastewater and get those out of sight, out of mind for spoil piles, gravel piles. But um, so you will be putting the, the piles back behind here. Yeah, we're putting some right here behind the um, log cabin, and we're putting some back behind the uh, street department for now. Right. As far as painting the building, it is galvanized, so we can um, get a you know a silver coat of paint probably put on it. 
um, privacy fence. And that's what I'm asking. What which one? I mean, do you think would be better to throw some paint on it or a fence? You know, like I'm talking not like an eight foot fence. Like you go to Menards, they got their real tall, like whatever it is, ten, twelve foot fence. I don't know. I'm just thinking out loud to make it look a little cleaner when you're coming into town. Just thought. How much would it cost to paint it? No idea. That's been the same paint on that for almost probably 50 years. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and it's not rusted. That's the that's right. The it's just job. peeling and dirty and yeah. flaky. And I mean, the building is way past the peaceful line, so we have to take that into consideration. So then you have to balance what it looks like to the public. You know, it is a street department, so you have to take that into consideration. <laughs> You know, but you just got to be careful about how much money you put into that building just because of the aging. Well, and, I, and I'd be interested to see what it looks like once we get some of the equipment yeah. out of there. I mean, <laughs> I'll go back through because you, it's the first thing you notice when it is. If you look over it there. Um, Especially. Well, you, you, what, do you want to talk to them, though, about maybe like down the road, like getting, relocating the street department? I mean, that's the discussion, really. We were looking at trying to get the storage equipment down at Wastewater and put them in the same building. And we were looking at, I want to say it's around two hundred forty-five or two hundred fifty thousand for basic a basic full barn. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um to house down there. I kind of put that on hold one as I got an engineer coming in this next week to talk with wastewater on possible future upgrades to make, you know, get rid of chlorine and because we have chlorine gas down there. And if they say we need some of this area to do this upgrade, then we and we still have enough room. Yeah, we've been trying to consolidate at least those three apartments down to that area. Mm -hmm. Okay. No way, no equipment, nothing. I don't know what we would do with that area once we would say level the Quonset HUD mm -hmm. or whatever, but Yeah. Okay. I was just curious if you had any plans for it. So. Do you council does council want some quotes on what it would take to kind of do that over there? We're not, I'm not we're trying to leave you hanging, but I mean If you're I asking, I would I would love to see some ideas. I mean yeah. just you know, fence and you know, for me a fence and maybe some paint. I mean, I don't know. I mean, Especially if you're going to be putting dirt piles back there now. Where did the fence go? I'm trying to visualize this. You'd have to go parallel with uh, 571. So it would have to be open coming. If someone needs to, the city guys coming out the back trying to get down that little walk, that driveway, they would have to physically open the gate? No, I'm, well, I mean, the way I'm thinking is more or less a U. Like if you're, if, you know, if this is the front of the building where everybody pulls in, and this is 571, just put a U around it, or, or at least around maybe part of it, which closes to five cents. Yeah, the thing with that is if someone's back there and you have to see them, so you're enclosing a space that has a lot of, you know, potential set options. I mean, if you put a fence there when someone's behind the fence, they're done. So is it possible to kind of figure out where we're going to put these piles and do like a privacy U around just that area where, mm -hmm. where you dump the stuff, maybe? Uh, like where you had to do it with dumpsters, you know? Um, most of them don't probably go back. Yeah, I mean, just mm -hmm. I mean, some brainstorming in the future, maybe. Absolutely. Thank you, Mr. Kitko. Mm -hmm. All right, moving on. Emergency ambulance capital. Fire chief. Um, they seem to be in a good mood today, so just uh -huh. add add whatever you want to it, bud. What? <laughs> <laughs> I said they're in a good mood today. Add whatever you want to it. New engine, things, <laughs> air packs. <laughs> Salary's about $22 an hour would probably help a lot. Uh, okay. <laughs> Emergency ambulance um, under 2213. Uh, uh, fire station renovation de demolition, 15000 And also remember, uh, we split all of our funds in between ambulance and fire. There's very few things that can't go under both. But it's just the way our levy money is split. We have to separate in between fire and or EMS and fire. Um, fire station renovation, demolition. The demolition part of that is for the old substation. Uh, air packs, sixty thousand, and uh, new computers, three thousand. And then in twenty three, we have fifty thousand for a new air compressor. That compressor is not your standard air compressor for like filling tires, that type of thing. Is for filling the SCBA bottles. It has to be a separate, special type of air compressor, and it's inspected twice a year and sampled and all that good stuff. Um, and then going on down, air packs again in 2024 and 2026. Our air packs right now are, are three cycles out, which means they're over 20 years old. 
which they need to be replaced. And um, we are putting in grants for that, but grants aren't guaranteed. So we have them in the budget. If it was to get the AFG grant for the air packs, uh, we would only be responsible for 10% of that. Um, that brings that to 78,000. Then going down into fire and fire capital, uh, saving back 100,000 per year. We've been doing that to save back for a new engine, uh, 2022 and then 2023, and then start hopefully to spec that engine out. And hopefully we will have at least, if not over half, if not more, uh, right now, a new engine just stock off the, uh, built off the line with no equipment on it is anywhere between 450 to 500,000 just for the engine itself. That doesn't even include the ladders on the side of the truck. Wow. So. The city should start building fire trucks and sell them. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> good little side gig. Right. <laughs> uh, then next, uh, new structural fire gear, the bunker gear for the firefighters, 25,000 this year. And we've added 1,000 each year following 23, 24, 25, 26, um, just for the simple reason of co uh, cost in increase. Right now, a new set of bunkers here, here for one firefighter is right around $3,500. And those have to be replaced every 10 years, no matter what their condition by the PA guidelines. Um, tools and equipment, 15,000. And then again, the fire station renovation limit, demolition, 15,000 in the fire site also. New computers and equipment, 3,000 that's uh, by new desktop computers and that type of thing for the uh, training office and for the assistant chief's office. And then air packs again, 60,000. For us to buy enough air packs right now to outfit the department, we're looking at about 120, if not more, thousand uh, dollars to buy the air packs. And that comes with one air pack, two, spare, two, one, two cylinders, which are the air, air cylinders themselves, and one mask. And then we would also be purchasing probably extra masks to go along with that. That brings up that up to 118,000. Like I said, they're going across again in 2024 buying more air packs. And again, like I said, we um, put in for the we are putting in for the grants for that. We're also putting in a grant for AFG grant for the a new engine. And again, we'd be only responsible for 10% if we was to get that. Um, Air pack grant, I think we're in a good shape to get that if it goes through. Uh, but grants are shot in the dark. Uh, depends on who's reading the paperwork at the time. Mm -hmm. And it's one of those things that they see one thing that they don't like on our packet, they don't call and ask us about it, they just automatically get out of the process. Um, we have hired a grant writer to do our grant writing. We found that that's the best way to go about it because it is so complex. Um, and that brings us down at the end to $372,500. So the, I'm sorry, Mr. Cobb, go ahead. No, no, that 3725 is also including streets and police. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, you're good. I just wanted to correct that for the record. Chief Trustee, how many people have you lost? So far this year on the EMS side? On the EMS side, how many personnel have I lost? I've lost four in the past four months, five months. Uh, one of those I'll regain when she's done with her probationary period at Hubert. Uh, the other one chose to go to Dayton due to um, full time position, basically. Um, and the other one left to. Uh, a, to you know, pursue other things, and I lost one by us releasing them. And also, you lost them due to money, right? Not being paid high enough. That's part of the issue right now. Yeah, that's one of the discussions that uh, Mr. Bridge and, and Ms. Harris and all of us been been having. Uh, it's across the board, not just us. Um, Bethel Clark, Bethel Miami Pike, even full-time fire departments right now are hurting people. Uh, fire service as a whole is it's getting it's getting bad. I mean, we need to, as, as council <coughs> and excuse me, and as the city, we need to find out a way of increasing their money to try to keep personnel instead of losing them going somewhere else for money. 
to do that for all city employees. Huh? All city employees need to be addressed. That well, way. I mean, but you're right. Yeah, but we've got to find a way to increase the, the pay so we don't lose people. And I know the sheriff having the same trouble. Right now, we're right now in our in our local area. We are the lowest paid department. But I mean, we've got to find a way to keep people here. I don't know how, but other than maybe increasing the pay for some other departments it, are doing the same thing. Right. It, it's in like Mr. Bridge said. It, it's a, it's a chess game. We up, they up, we up, they up. Uh, but also, too, on the same hand, if I got a person, which I do, I have several people that work for me, that also work for Bethel Park, also work for Bethel Miami. Uh, my son, matter of fact, he works for me, for Bethel Park, and for Bethel Miami. That's the way a lot of people earn their living working three or four different part time departments. Um, but say I have an open hole today, the other department has an open hole today, they're going to go to the other department and pick that open hole up because they make more money. And you can't blame them for that. That's what, you know, they have to look at their finances also. Um, but like I said, it, it's a it's a problem across the board. And well, that's why I was saying we need to look at as council and along with the city we can <coughs> increase and pay here. Right, and like I said, that's all what, employees. That's one thing we, uh, uh, Ms. Harris and Ms. Bridge, and I, we've been having meetings about looking at. Matt, we've even looked at a long range five year plan of, of actually what I feel the city needs to start really seriously looking at within the next five years. Of putting money up to where we can start hiring full-time firefighters. If you're offering somebody versus a part-time job to a full-time job with benefits, I think we're going to be a lot better off. Mm -hmm. And that you know that may take raising our levy, you know that type of thing. It's going to take raising the levy. You're going to need to ask your citizens for about way more than what they know. Yeah. Significant. Yeah. Divided up. I just don't think it's a number of I don't have it memorized, but it is a lot. Um, Another option that council should look at, too, we barely discussed, we've talked about a little bit, is you may have to give up control of the fire department with the merging with the Bethel Clark. Say it again? Merging with Bethel Clark. Oh. No, I, I, I'm not Bethel Clark to watch, and I'm not saying do I do that tomorrow, <laughs> but down the road, that's how these departments are really joining forces, and they're, they're, they're merging. Uh, because it's, it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's sad to sit back and watch these single professions. Mm -hmm. It is. Uh, but hey, we got a fantastic guy running our place. I'm sure we'll, we'll weather the storm very well. It, you know, and it, it's a roller coaster. It goes up and down. So, you know, it's, and I think right now the fire service as a whole is in a down, a down spiral. Um, and you know, I know I've said it before, but the, the patriot thing of, of 9-11 when everything happened and firefighters were, you know, everybody looked at us as, oh my God, look what happened. Um, that's kind of gone because the kid that got hired at New York City Fire Department the day after 9-11 retired this year. 20 years and out. Yeah. Well, the only reason I bring this up, I don't want to lose you as a chief. Well, I'll be honest with you, no matter what, unless, unless the city or the council of Mr. Rich decides that I'm not the person to be in this seat anymore. I'm not going anywhere. I don't give up. I don't quit. <laughs> I have a question. It's been a while ago. You gave us a comparison of our firefighter pay compared with other communities. Yes, sir. You still have that? Can you get it? I can out? give it to you off the top of my head. We're paying fourteen dollars, uh, fourteen dollars an hour. For a paramedic, we're paying thirteen twenty-five dollars, uh, thirteen twenty-five an hour for an EMT. Uh, Bethel Park is paying sixteen, going to seventeen this next year for a paramedic. Um, Bethel Miami is paying sixteen, going to seventeen, and Pike Township is paying fifteen, going to sixteen. You got that? In, I'll just ask oh yeah. Uh, you got that? You in want form? me to recite them back to you? You got that? <laughs> you got that in a form somewhere? Excuse me? You got it in the form, digital form? I can get, I can get it for you, and uh, because every year, not just me, but all the chiefs in the area, we all kind of get together. Hey, what are you paying this year? What are you going to go to the next year? You know, that type of thing. We, you know, all the chiefs in the area, it's the old days of my department, you know, you know, it's not like that. We're very much, we're trying our best to work together, uh, especially me and Chief King. Uh, we have a really strong, good working relationship uh, to be able to talk things over, not just manpower, but, you know, salaries, equipment, everything else. Okay. 
How long has the fire levy, how, how long has it been the same amount? Uh, we, we did a renewal. We when, we got the levy, when we got our levy, we went from $12 an hour to $14 an hour for a paramedic. We went from paying uh, EMTs to $11.25 to 1325 but the now levy the levy is the same mill uh the levy was over almost three almost three years ago but it's our levy is due to renew in, on the ballot in 2022. you have multiple levies you're firing in mass department some are continuous so the vast majority of them are and then you have your one that's renewal so that's going to collect through 2022 and then we'll put it on the ballot in 2022. so that's been the same millage for quite a while um, it's been the same millage, the same millage, up until we put the, the one we currently have, or the additional one we have on there. So it was the same, and the one, the, the one that gets renewed in 2020 added millage to do that. So really, that was the point, so we had the same millage. And yet labor costs are going up faster than, than that. Would council like to see the wage study for all city employees or just the fire and EMS department? All city employees. Oh. Okay. And, and honestly, as Mr. Bridge said, it's not just a problem that's that's solely to the fire department. You can talk to any uh, police, uh, any public food, food industry, any any industry you look at right now is having a hard time uh, getting people to work. You know, when you're seeing different companies and different businesses closing early or whatever, they just don't have to work. I see that all over. Miami County Sheriff has a billboards. Yeah. Um, every school you pass in the entire area now hiring bus drivers. Right. Uh, Ohio Patrol, their 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 patrolmen, Ohio State Patrol, they're going out at 27 years now. They're what? Leaving after 27 years. Time. Out. Leaving what Springfield? No, no retiring. Ohio, Ohio, State, retiring. Ohio State Patrol. They're leaving the, the service after only seven years. Um, I won't know more about fire and, and, and law enforcement because that's we, we kind of tag team together, and I see a lot more about that. But like I said, it's it's bad all over. It really is. We're not the only one in the boat. A bunch of us are trying to row together, and. I, I, I Do I agree that our salaries need to go up? I do. Drastically, they do need to go up. But do I think money is the answer? No. But it helps. It helps. Yeah, of course. Um, and give, I give another example. We hire seasonal employees all, all, every year to cut grass. Um, this year it took us about two, two and a half months to buy one mm -hmm. to sit on that lawn and cut grass. Um, this is give you an idea of what the market's like. I mean, it's bad it is mm -hmm. well, well if i may cry even more what other than money benefits. what other than money is benefits huh benefits, benefits. Okay. So tuition still, reimbursement you know and but also too you look at um i've got several you know people in the department that work full-time departments other departments like my assistant chief jeff gallagher is a third generation firefighter lieutenant with uh, huber they're you know they were wanting to hire fill five slots and they were even willing to accept lateral moves, which is something means someone moving from one fire department to another fire department. Um, and started out with only 16 applicants. That's unheard of. Normally you have five, app five openings in a fire department, you'll have 120 to 150 uh, applicants for it. They had, six, they had 16, they lost eight of those for the first round, but they lost the uh, uh, either background check or whatever. They ended up down to three, and none of those three were able to accept the positions. Let me um, jump in real quick, because I want to ask you a quick question, Chief, before we get moving forward. So the, on the um, where go? fire station renovation and demolition, so I'm assuming that 15 grand is to cover what? The demo of the, of the old um, substation and to, <coughs> put, and to put down a uh, blacktop, or is that just for demo? We hope between the, the two, Two funds, six, fifteen thousand each would cover all of it. We, I've got a phone call. I did call um, companies to give us a, a estimate on black topping. Uh, Mr. Pico was able to give me the uh, stats what I, what we would need as far as gravel inches and black top inches. 
and I have not received anything back from them that, none of them that came out to get us a bid yet. Do you think, should the, should, the, should the fire department pay for the demo of that building? I'm just asking. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. I mean, well, I guess it is right. the city. Right, I mean, it's I mean, a city building, it's not the fire department's building. Since, it's, <laughs> since it was a police substation, shouldn't it be the police fire? Right. <laughs> no offense. No? <laughs> Just muddying the water. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. So, um. Council, can I interrupt real quick since she's here? Um, Deputy Megan Forrest, I want to introduce you guys to. She's going to be your third shift. Uh, new Carlisle deputy. It's going to be working midnight. So she's out currently field training with Deputy uh, Eubanks. Awesome. They're assigned to Area 1 today, so Park Lane, New Carlisle. So. We were able to stop in. I just wanted to introduce you guys to it. Awesome. Great. Thank you for stopping by and welcome. Nice I sat in for the interview of her and I am so glad you are here. You are awesome and I look forward to working with you even more. Mm -hmm. <coughs> yeah, you know, so is that something we can address um, as far as changing or, or looking at another option since the, the fire department is running so tight could the demo of that building be paid for somewhere else whether it's come out of your general fund right i mean they're going to be using the land after so they should have to pay something and they actually utilize it. been utilizing the drive so you know fifteen thousand thirty thousand in the fund is not people um but they do have their vested interest in that um so that's I mean, if you want to take one out of one of them and have the general fund take 15000 of it. I just think, I mean, my opinion, I mean, I know we've talked about the general fund's healthy and, you know, the fire department's stressing with, you know, these old air packs and, you know, personnel issues. If we could save them a buck, I think it would be a smart move. I mean, I know it's not going to change the, your, your pattern of, of employment, I don't think, but, I mean, a nickel's a nickel, in my opinion. It is, but the fire and EMS department also, too, are the, the two departments that are more than likely going to get the grant money to help out with stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, ultimately, it's council, the council say. Um, I think they should have to pay something towards it. If you guys want to take well, some of it, move it towards the general fund, that's fine. Well, it's it not a big deal. And I also think pays, pays for the demo. I think you pay for it. I'm sorry. I'm okay with that. What is it now? I didn't hear that. General fund pays for the demo, and then the fire department pays pays for making a parking lot. Okay, so I will need a motion to move fifteen thousand to lands and buildings of the general fund. Hold on, hold on. Um, Emily made me a cheat sheet. Casino, I struggle. As she's Struggled. sitting in her I don't, I don't the joke. field of flowers. Huh? As she's sitting in her field of flowers. Nobody just see that little green baseball game. All right, so this is going, is, is, is the motion going? So moved. Okay. Second. So it's to move 15,000 out of, Fire Chief, what do you want it out of, EMS or Fire? Uh, EMS. Miss Harris, final say. He said it's split. So well. It's two. Can we split it split and just do 7,500 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, each one? And then we'll go through that. Yeah. And then move 15? Yeah. I like that. All right, so the motion is to move 15,000, no, move 7,500 of demo, fire state, substation, the old substation demo, move from each of was it under capital, fire capital? Emergency ambulance. Emergency ambulance. Emergency ambulance. Up. Two, one, three. And then what's the uh, Fire operating. Two, one, five, or four? Uh, two, one, five. Then move and add 15,000 to plans and buildings. I'm going to read it for the record. So the motion on the board, that was uh, initiated, initiated by 
Mr. Okowski. Second by Mr. Grimm. Okay, so the motion is to uh, move 7,500 of uh, 7,500 for uh, the demo of the old substation from each emergency ambulance capital, I mean operating two one, fund 213, and then fire two one five. operating 215, then we're going to take that amount, which is equal to 15,000, and move it to lands and buildings in the general fund, uh, fund number 101-2000. Correct. Yeah, first by Councilwoman Nowakowski. Second by Councilman Grimm. Correct. So we'll start with a vote with uh, Councilwoman Eagleston. Yes. Councilman Cobb. Yes. Councilman Rogwald. Yes. Uh, Vice Mayor Cook. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Uh, Councilwoman Eagleston. Oh, I'm sorry, Councilwoman Nowakowski. <laughs> Yes. And Council Ingram. Yeah. All right. Measure passes seven to zero. Thank you. All right. With us uh, two minutes away, do we want to uh, pick this back up uh, the next meeting? Mm hmm Okay. So we will end this meeting and continue on in, in the regular session. Council? Move to adjourn. Second. Motion by Ms. Eggleston. Second by Mr. Grimm to adjourn. Helene, are you taking these notes down there? Yeah. Crap. I forgot this clerk. Okay, who was the first? I'm sorry. Uh, Ms. Eggleston motion and Mr. Grimm second. All right, so we'll just start with uh, Councilman Nowakowski. Yes. Councilman yeah. uh, <laughs> <laughs> You, you. Councilman yes. Roadwalk. Yes. Vice Mayor Cook. Yes. And Mayor Lowry. Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. And Councilman Green. Yes. All right. 659. We are adjourned.